everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have a very small project, literally, to talk about today and want to make it a series of videos because it was, <clears throat> excuse me, an evolution down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me pull out my prop. Okay. Alrighty. So, in the first video that I did about this subject, which was called Fake Mini Books, um, they were because readers were doing this as a way to play basically um, I hate to use the expression Russian roulette about what, what it is they want to read next when they read for avid readers. So I showed you the jar and all the little books that I made. Well, after that, I started looking at more videos and more videos started popping up into my feed about mini books. The next set of mini books that I made, which uh, they're not usable mini books, were these little replicas of um, old books which you make a regular book. It's not anything, there's no secret, it's a three-piece um, book where you do the two covers and then you do the spine. You, you cover this exactly like you would a regular little book. Big book, small book, doesn't matter, you still cover it the same. Then you create your uh, text block, which is all the signatures that are put together. You, and you just go from there. So I did this one. I think I did this large one first. Then I went smaller because I thought, well, how small can I go? Well, this is as far as I've gotten because I got distracted by yet another video about mini books. So these these are like hard because you uh, to keep the pages the way they are, you use a lot of um, matte medium on them and brush them, or you can use watered down glue, doesn't matter. It still has the same effect. It, it's so that the pages don't move. So I did those, and I went online and got images off, the, off Google, and then I didn't size them very well for this page because this was the first one. Um, and the, I'm not sure I understand the measurements on Canva when you contract and expand. It says 0.09, but it doesn't say like one and four, one and a fourth inches. It does it in de in decimals. So it's or percentages, and it's hard to figure it out for me. I'm I'm struggling with that. Okay, so there's this one, and this is covered with heavy duty. Um, it's not wallpaper, but it's a very heavy duty paper. This one is covered in material that I made in fodder school. And this is a cotton bed sheet that was on its way out and I decided not to throw it away. So I've been using it as sari ribbon and uh, sheets of material, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I covered the book with the material. So this is a cotton bed sheet that was tea dyed, stamped, and then cut down to cover the book. I have not covered too many books in fabric, so this is one of my very first forays into covering a book with fabric. And again, um, this is just like this one, only a smaller version, except for this time when I reprinted this. Whoops. I made sure this was a... I tried to do this in the ratio so that it would go to the edge of the paper. Didn't quite make it, but I'm getting closer, <laughs> so... Uh, the ribbons in the middle are sorry ribbons that um, I won a $25 Etsy gift certificate from handmadebook.com when we were in a gathering together on Zoom. And I went to Etsy and I bought $25 worth of um, different, an assortment of sorry ribbon colors. And these are two of the colors that I got, the maroon and the dark green. Okay, so what I want to do today is I want to show you how I made these. And I will, um, I will make, I think, 
to complete my trio here, I might make one even smaller than this one so that I can have them in graduated sizes. Yeah. Um, if you notice here, this sticks out more on the sides. I did have this one, it was extended further out and I cut it off because it was very obvious it was too large. Hopefully this time I will be able to make my pages and my book actually match because I have a little left here and then nothing on this side. And it's kind of the same way here too because there's a little bit here and lots of here and it should be so that they're both equal. So my sizing is a little off, but like I said, these are the only two I've made and they've been sitting on my desk for over a week now. I just sit there and look at them. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, we're about to get a thunderstorm, so if you hear a lot of weird noises in the background, it's the weather. It's not my dog or my stomach. <laughs> Alright, so what's next is when I said thread, I meant really small sewing thread. Do your usual knot at the end. And you need a pen. The color of the thread doesn't matter. No one's going to see it, so if you have black or brown or yellow or green. It, it really doesn't matter. I just happen to have white because I was using this on another project and it was left over. All right, so here are my, and let me tell you, I did eight signatures and yes, they're very tiny. <laughs> so if you don't like fiddly stuff, this is not the project for you because this is fiddly and I, uh, this is not a part that I enjoy, I have to say. Um, so I have eight signatures because what I want is, I want the same amount on the right that I have on the left. So I'll do four a split when I open the book up there'll be four signatures open to the right uh, the right and four signatures to the left so that gives it a basically an even look you don't have to do it that way that's just my choice and this one's about even there you go all right so here it is you take your signatures and make sure that the bottom the fold is even take your ink pen you pinch it take your ink pen and this is where your sew line is going to be. It's just like sewing any other book. All right, so now you take your signature, and I'm not going to put this in, and I don't care what order they're in. Um, some of these have three pieces of paper, some have four. You're going to take your signature and kind of fold it back a little bit. I'm just poking the hole with the needle that I'm going to sew with. And you want to make sure that 
the um, ink marks are on the outside because this is all going to be covered up so no one will see what you use for a pen. All right, so you're going to go in the front where you where your pen mark is and you're going to pull almost to the edge to the end where the knot is. Go to the back side. Needle goes up. Then you're going to take the needle and loop it inside this, your original where the knot is. And you're going to pull, and you may have to kind of pull up on here to make sure it's tight in the middle. And let's see if I get it right. Of course not. <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay. <laughs> The idea is for this to work when you demo it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go back through here and see what we got. All right, so we're right back where we started. Okay, I see what happened is this is not pulled evenly. So pull your knot out and go in between the threads here. And then try to pull with even pressure. There we go. And the knot is so small, it'll be insignificant, I promise. Okay, so you've got this. You take your next signature. You can pre-poke the holes. It's just that I don't want to take the time to do it. And then I just stab. And yes, I have stabbed my finger once. <laughs> Fold it. And then put it... Put it on top of the next signature. And then go in the bottom. This is basically like the three-hole pamphlet stitch, except for you only have two holes. So I've clamped these guys together because um, I don't want them to come apart, you know, willy-nilly. The next part, you will need some kind of a gauze material or you can use, I suppose, a sheet, you know, a bed sheet. You can use tool. You can use cheesecloth, anything. Um, I was gifted this um, book cloth. I don't know if you call this book cloth, but it's some kind of a, a netting. It's very coarse. And you take it and you can kind of lay your text block down and figure out about, now you need to make sure you have enough for the cloth to cover your book from a, shy, a little bit shy of the top, a little bit shy of the other side. I'm going to just do it this way for GP. And then you need to um, make sure that when you glue it, it overlaps it because that's what holds the book text together. So I'm thinking I'm going to cut this up. See what happens when you don't see. Look at that. Isn't that lovely how that folds over like that? Oh, you probably can't see that that way. Okay, let's take this. And then I might have to trim it down even smaller before it's over. See, here's what the point of what we're doing. Let me see. There's one, two, three, four. So when I my book is open on the <laughs> when it opens up, it should kind of open up like this later. But look at it, it already wants to do its own thing. There we go. So it should kind of lay like that. All right, so we're going to push this together. I'm waiting for my heat gun to, um, to heat up. The reason you're using a heat gun is because you're going to dip this in liquid. Now, if you use PVA, this is not going to work. It, it's going to make your glue kind of dissolve. I'm coffee dyeing mine, so I want to be sure that my text block here is not going to come apart. So that's why you use hot glue. This is the quick and easy method, and this is almost foolproof. All right, so I'm going to take this and kind of 
overlap it on the front or back, whichever you want to call it. And then I'm going to trim off some of this because it's too long and you don't need that. All right, so let's do that. Bing. And it's too, too long, overlaps too much on the sides. So I just trim it up a little bit. And this part will take two seconds, I swear. Um, you're going to need some kind of a heat mat. I have a glass mat under this, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take this, and when I glue it, I'm going to put a bunch of glue here to glob it on there. Then I'm going to take this while the glue is still hot, and I'm going to wrap it around here. That's going to te that's going to te keep sorry keep your um, text block together as one piece. And if they're not even, no problem. If you're really anal retentive about them being neat, you can just take your scissors and do a little clip job. I could care less because you're not really going, none of these are even. So it really does not matter that much. These aren't either. <laughs> All right, so let's get that out of the way. And a word of advice. If you're going to use clips, make sure your clip opens wide enough to hold what it is you're working on. I found that out the other day when the clip snapped when I tried to press <laughs> make it do more than what it was supposed to do. All right, so I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for the glue gun. Um, after we put the glue on it and put the netting over it, I'm gonna take it, let me scoot the stuff over so you can see what I'm gonna do next. This is class and this will be fine. Let's see, is it hot yet? Is it dribbling? I rear, oh, yep, got a dribble. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this off, take this off. I'm gonna hold it like this. Oh my, it's getting more loud. Mother Nature's going to interrupt my video. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're going to smudge hot glue on here. And you want to make sure you get around the edges and a little bit over here and a wee bit over here. Be careful you don't burn yourself. I've already done that a couple times by bumping my glue gun. All right, I'm going to take this and put it over the netting. And if you have a hot, hot glue glue gun, you don't want to touch this. Let me see. You know, I need to really work on placement for things. You're going to take this while it's still hot and you're going to mash it down onto the flat surface. And it'll sit there by itself. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I don't know. It's silly. All right. And then when it's over, you're going to take it and peel it up. And now you're glued. So there's your little book. Oh shoot, there's my words. Oh well, there's your little book all done. You can glue more under here. I think this side's good. Let me stick a little more hot glue on there to make sure my block stays together because I'm going to dip it in coffee. All right, and then we'll just smooth it down with this. And I'm going to have to clean this off. All right, so there you go. There's your text. And, and you're not going to lose any pages because they're all sewn together. There you go. All right, the next part's going to require that you have your... Um, this is where we're going to put the chipboard together to put this on a piece of chipboard. Let me see how these compare to the other two. Let me move this over so you don't get the glare. There you go. So we'll have large, medium, and small. This is like the three bears. <laughs> Whoa, that really is going to be small, but it might be just enough that it's graduated to the other two. Awesome. Just awesome. All right, so while I pick the glue off my hands, I got to think about I need a piece of chipboard that will serve as the... And, you can use a cereal box. Do not buy chipboard. 
just use a cereal box because honestly, this is incidental to all of it. All right, so it's nice and smooth and it's cooled off and it's nice and hard. So this is not gonna come, none of your stuff's gonna fall out. So you're gonna need chipboard and something to cover your chipboard in. That's the next process. This is on my paper cutter cart. These are leftover pieces of chipboard from other projects. Like I said, try to use as use up as much um, leftover stuff as possible. Let me see if this will fit my book. Oh, perfect. Let's see. Let's do it on the wider end because evidently I could not cut, cut straight. <laughs> so what else is new? <laughs> um, do I want to use this piece or I want to use a more uniform piece? I don't have to cut too much. Yeah, let's use this one. This one's a little crooked. I don't want to have to do any extra cutting. I don't have to do. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this um, glued edge even with the edge of the chipboard. This is very scientific, you know. <laughs> I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw. Bring. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And no, I can't even draw a straight line with a pencil either. <laughs> So when I cut this, I want to give myself just a little extra room here so that just like these, you can see a little bit of the book itself. So let me measure this and see what we have here. All right, so this is 7 eighths, and I'm going to cut it at 1 inch each. Yeah, so I'll cut this at one inch each. And then we have to think about the spine. Now, I think this spine probably is about a quarter of an inch. Because it's glued on the side, it might be a little bigger than a quarter of an inch. Maybe... Um, Three-eighths. All right, so I'm going to cut two pieces that are one inch each, and then I'll do a three-eighths. So let me go cut this real quick. Okay, so um, let's see what's next. What I'm going to do is take the pieces here. I did go ahead and cut this as a quarter of an inch. I think I'll probably be big enough because I'm going to leave a space in between these so that should, that should compensate for it. So you're going to take these and you're going to lay them down together. I'm going to leave a little space here because I cut my board a little bit smallish. Like that. So you have a very small gap in between them. Then this is going to lay here. I think I cut my pieces a little too tall. So I'm going to go back and adjust these because they're too tall for this. I forgot to measure that. So let me take this. And give myself a teeny bit of headroom. Well, no. I don't care that it's not lined up at the bottom. What I care about is the edges so you can see the book. Went back to the scrap drawer and found this. Uh, I carved the stamp, printed in ink, and I think this is a photocopy of the pattern. So I'm going to take some PVA. And I only want to make sure that I'll be able to wrap, uh, 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 wrap um, the paper around the book. And it helps if your glue is not... stuck inside the bottle. All right, because my print, I'm not sure if this will show through, I'm going to glue the white down. And yes, I did not cut straight on my edges. I don't think that's going to be an issue. We will see. All right, so I want to place it here so 
it looks like there's too much paper, but I rather have too much than not enough because I have stretched the thinnest line of paper around the book and then it turned out it doesn't look so good. And then I go back and recover it. And I, oops, wrong way. I was not thrilled I had to go back and do it. So I'm gonna leave a little gap here, just the tiniest little gap. Let's make sure we have enough space. Yep, okay. Then I'm gonna glue this one. Let's glue it the white side down, Vicki. I'm gonna take a ruler and butt it up against it, and then I'm gonna glue this one. As you can see, my books are my things are not even. If you're a perfectionist, this is going to drive you absolutely bonkers. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to take my utility knife. I'm just kind of lay it on the edge of the book there, but I want to make sure I have enough to roll over here because you're not really going to, you're not going to put paper on the inside. You'll see. So I'm going to put this over here. All right, so I'm going to fold this like I would if I was doing any other book. Increasing my edges. Then I'm going to, the girl gave this tip and I've used it and I like it. There's a cross, there's a intersection that goes from here to here. You need to cut diagonally through the intersection. So it goes here and here and you just cut a little ways from the edge. You don't need to cut a whole bunch of paper. You don't need a whole bunch left over. All right, so there's this. Then I'm going to glue. Glue here. Now the trick is we're going to take the ruler and we're going to go down inside here. And yes, it makes your book flip up a little bit and it may crack. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see the back side. that. Put that there. Fold it over and oh it turned out fine. Look at that. And then I'm going to do this. A little of this. And a twee bit of this. So you have a regular book. And look, it doesn't matter that my edges weren't cut evenly. It doesn't matter here. Now, if they're really like diagonal, yeah, that's going to matter. Okay, so the next portion is going to take you a little time. And I'm going to tell you a couple ways that I do this, but you might want to choose one that's easier for you or that's good for you. I just use what's readily available for me. Um, you can buy instant coffee. The girl that I watched do hers took instant coffee, took a container, put instant coffee in it, and um, it was warm and she stirred it up and then dipped her book text in it. So I brewed some espresso and I keep it in the fridge. I need a wider mouth here. That's why I'm pointing it in here. You take this with a pair of tweezers. Remember, this is why you use the glue gun. You take this and you dunk your bad boy in there. And you make sure that everything gets dyed, all the little pages. Just give it a nice coffee bath. Make sure it's really saturated. You need for it to be very wet. And the pages will expand, and that's a good thing. Unlike my waistline. Okay, you take it out. And you may want to put some kind of a mat down. You can use that heat mat to lay it on, because it's going to be a little drippy. All right, here's the, the fun part. 
let me get a napkin to kind of blot it up a little bit. You don't want to blot too much. You do want your book text to stay wet. See, it's nice and wet. And it did not go all the way through, so I'm going to have to dunk it again. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to spread it open and dunk again. Because while you're spreading the pages, you want to make sure that you get everything dyed. So I'm going to take the tweezers and kind of spread the sheets out, the pages. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to try to figure out where center is. <laughs> or uh, I don't want it to be where that you can see those words. I don't want it to be there because I don't want to see those. All right, so we have this. It's nice and wet. And what you're going to do is you're going to form it so that it looks like an open book. You're kind of play around with the pages. What did she use? I think she used her tweezers last time. She take, kind of takes the pages apart and spreads the pages out a little bit so they're fluffed. Imagine me using the word fluff with coffee dyed paper. Um, so you kind of fluff your pages out. You kind of separate them because you need for them to look so you can see the edges there. And if you rip a page, not a big deal because the next page is wet and it will lay right down on top of it. So it's okay. Don't panic. All right, there's this. Now, I realize this is dry and this is wet. And see, I can see that I have made a monumental mistake. Because I made my book too large. And y'all are screaming, we knew already. It's okay. So I have this in the middle. And I want to see how far I need to cut off. So. This is how I cheat. I put this down in the middle. I want to make sure the text is in the middle. And see, this has not come undone because you used hot glue. I'll lay this on here. So I want to figure out how much of this I need to cut off. All right, so I take a pencil. And I'll kind of draw an imaginary line there. I'll take my straight edge and my cutter. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to take this on the other side. And hopefully you'll do a better job than I did with measuring and estimating. This happened with the other two books too because I wasn't paying attention. So this is how you cheat. You have extra paper on hand. You take this on the edge, you wrap it around and you glue it. Now the girl in the video does not do this. She measured much better than I did. But for visual purposes, I really don't need for this to be beautiful. I mean, I don't need for it to be perfect. This is a little wet here, so we'll see how this goes. I'm going to put a little on this side and write you here. Take this little strip and try to butt it up nice and neat to the edge at the top. And I'll fold over this little piece right here. I'm going to butt the scissors up to the edge. You've already, it, you can see the other paper through this, so it's fine. I'm going to glue this here because this is a little wet from where I laid it down. There's a little damp from the coffee. 
and it doesn't matter because you're going to need time for the for the text block to dry anyway. So while that's drying, this is drying. Okay, so you can take this and you can see that you're going to see a teeny bit on the edge and it doesn't matter. You don't have to cover from a certain point in, but you need to make sure your um, paper is turned over. I got this. So that's good. All right, so this is going to take a little bit of time for this to dry. And you don't want to lay it on any paper service because it'll stick. I didn't learn that the hard way. You want to straighten out your papers so that this lays flat as possible onto the book. This is where you can fluff some more. And as it's drying, you can fluff a little bit more. I did it a couple times till I got it where I wanted to to look because I want to see the edges of the pages, but not the Italian style meatloaf sign um, text sign. Because you don't want that to be the focus of your book. All right, so we're going to go this side. And we're going to fluff some more. I want to spread out some of these individual pages. This is a little tedious, but it will pay off in the end. So there's your open book. And now we wait. <laughs> this is going to need to dry. And this is going to need to dry. I think maybe I would like to turn my pages over a little bit more because I have more on one side than the other. So I'm going to take some of these and I'm going to flip them over to the other side. Now I've seen some of the videos where people like flip the pages up. So it looks like, you know, somebody's dog-eared the page. It looks real. Um, I've also watched a video where somebody took brown paint or um, Tim Holtz stain, distress ink, and then they um, did the edges to make it look more coffee dyed, dirty look. I want to make this more flat. There we go. And push this up a little bit. So if you're going to contour it, make sure that you do it while it's wet. I'll put this flat because this needs to be glued to the book, to the uh, book board or chipboard, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to make sure. All right, this might take a day or so to dry. I did um, try to hurry it along in the other projects where I took the heat gun and kind of blew it in between the pages and then laid them back down. So you got to let this dry. Okay, so this has taken about three hours to get where nothing will move. It's kind of starting to dry. It's still a little damp, but that's okay. So I'm going to take this. Because these other two uh, look more brown, I want this to look more brown because this is very white. It's green on white, so I want to damp. I want to... Um, change the look the way this looks because I want the focus to be on the book not the white in this so let's see I was prepared to do this but now I got to find something to do it with all right let's try this so I'm just going to take the oh this is um <laughs> this is Tim Holtz distress ink walnut stain one of my favorite ones to use for this sort of thing so I'm just gonna this is too small what was I thinking? Don't be so silly. All right. We don't want to sit here all day to do this. I'll put this on here. I just want to get rid of how bright the white is. 
I don't really want to obscure the green, but I do want to kind of downplay the white. So I'm going to brush this on here and see if I can't. It might be time to re-ink so I can kind of get rid of the white that you're going to see when the pages are laid on it. Especially where I made the little repair. I don't want it to really show. All right, this might be enough. Let me see. I'm gonna set this and I have to do is gingerly. Oh yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so we did this. Now we're gonna inflict more pain <laughs> on this little teeny book. And I'm going to slather the glue. And yes, I'm using PVA. I'm going to put it on places I know that will come in contact with the book itself. I'm hoping. If not, it's going to dry under there and no one's going to see it anyway. All right, so we're going to set this on top of here and I want to position it so it looks, oh, I like the way it looks already. Okay, that was a one-shot deal. Now I'm going to take the tweezers and kind of tamp down on the bottom page there and then I will walk away from it. No, I won't. I'm going to heat it up with the heat gun. <laughs> Wait, no. No, no, don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. Okay, so this one sits up a little higher than this one, but it's okay. Um, I have seen, I told you I saw other people take um, brushes and brush along the lines here to make it look older and then they bend the pages and do all this fancy schmancy stuff. I'm not going to do that. I am going to mash down more here though because I want that glue to adhere to the book because I'm going to make this thing wet again. I just go in there to kind of look sideways and just pick a page and start mashing down flat so that the glue sticks. I want to make sure that that book is in there. There we go. And then this needs to lay flat. I'm going to mash them down just a tad. And it's going to get all wet again. So let's see what's next. Oh, yes, this part. Let me get this. All right, so I've been using this to get, um, to use it up. This is DecoArt Deco Page. It's a paper, uh, what do you want to call it? Eeny, I can't. The words escape me. Anyway, I'm going to use this to, as soon as I find a brush I like, which seems impossible right now the way my desk looks. <laughs> it looks rather um, in a disarray, which is absolutely true. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Because I like the way this is drying, I'm going to dab this. I say dab and then it's slathered on there, but I want it to stick. Especially here. Because I want the book to rest the way it is right now. So I need a different brush. Mm. This is too much of a brush for this little project. Let's stick this in water real quick. Okay, so let's see. Let me use this one. I get the excess off of there because I don't need that much. And this is not sticking.
Okay, I went through the sari ribbon that I have, and I do not have a yellow. I would like to do it. Oh, I would like to put some yellow in there, but I don't have any. So I'm going to take a very small piece of white. And this is too large. The nice thing about sari ribbon is it rolls up on itself and you can unroll it. And I'm going to make it yellow by using a stamp pad because this is the quickest, easy, easiest way that I have literally at my fingertips. And then it'll kind of roll up on itself and no one but you and I will be the wiser. Okay, so you take this and there's usually a gap under here. Oh, 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 well. oh that's stuck really well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick it here at the top. shove it in there and then I'm gonna leave it up here but I want this to dry I'm gonna leave that up there and when it dries I will pull it down and glue in the crease of the book but now I have to go to the computer and make these very small to see if I can get them to fit on here Okay, I went through Canva and took the prints that I use for these and I've been trying to play around with the size. This is my second time to print this off. And I can see this is still too small. This was the first attempt. This is the second, which is only slightly larger than the first. So I need to do it one more time and see if I can make this larger. I'm not sure about the ratio of things on here. So I'm not really, not totally comfortable with what I'm doing, but I keep trying because I know there's a way for me to eventually understand this, but I haven't gotten to that point of enlightenment yet. All right, let's make this print. Having needle nose tweezers is most helpful. I don't think the blunt ones would do as good a job as the needle nose ones. These are very sharp. Lord knows I poked myself. Okay, so we have small, medium, I mean large, medium, and small. There you go. There they are. So there's the old world book look. I might run some... Um, as soon as it dries in a couple days I'll put some of this stain on it because right now it's very sticky and wet and I want it to dry and I think it needs to dry naturally instead of me hitting it with the, the gun so there they are that is book a, a new book I learned from uh, there's something just popped up in, in my um, box 
I mean my box, it popped up in my feed on YouTube, so I thought I would look I would look at it because it said something about antique books or making your own book, medieval books or something. I have the link. I will put the link down below for those of you who want to see how easy the other person made it look. <laughs> Okie doke. So this is the first book I want to show you guys that I've been making. Actually, it's the second one because the first ones were the ones that went in, you know, that didn't open and that went in the jar. For the readers. The, these are going to be a display item. They, you know, they're never going to be read or anything. So I just want to do a small, a small, medium, and large. So I had a graduated, I had graduated books. This sticks out a little too far, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to cut it off. I'll just leave it alone. Because then I'll have to make repairs on it and this, that, and I can't because this is already glued, glued down. So I'm going to leave it alone. So there they are, one, two, and three. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you don't mind, could you like, share, subscribe, and, and leave a comment? That's, I, I think I answer. If not, I put a heart on something, or I try to leave a, a, a comment to your comments as often as I can. Sometimes I miss them, but I do, I do look and try. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.